Setting up a good mixing and mastering room is very similar to setting up a hi-fi listening room or home studio. Only with a mixing room, it's even more important that you get your sound right because you want the sound coming from the speakers to be an accurate representation of the source material. You don't want to overcorrect for the room tone, spending hours and hours only to find out that, oh, it was off because your bass was too loud or too quiet or both, but in different areas. Remember, a good mixing room should make your job easier and quicker to do and give you a much better result. Starting with a dedicated room with good dimensions is always the best place to start. A room that's too small or with square dimensions is going to be harder to treat. Same with a room with a lot of glass or odd geometry. Place your listening position and speakers in an equilateral triangle, with your listening position centered between your long walls and facing your short wall. The high and mid-range of your speakers is going to be directional, but the bass tone reverberates from your speaker in every direction. You're going to want to alleviate this by placing your speaker as close to that front wall as you can but without touching it. You also want to make sure your speakers are at ear level. If you have to raise and angle them slightly, you might move in and out of the optimal path if you even shift slightly in your listening position. You want to be careful about putting speakers directly on your desk, as this can create an additional reflection point right on the desk in front of you. Isolating your speakers by putting them on decoupling stands can help keep them from reverberating through whatever surface they're sitting on. The first step in our treatment is naturally going to be our first reflection points, but that's not just the points in our wall. That's any surface between our listening position and our speakers can create a first reflection point. So wall, ceiling, floor, even that spot on our desk that we mentioned earlier can create a first reflection point, but it can all be treated with the right acoustic paneling. You're going to want to put thick bass traps in your corners, because that's where bass tends to build up the most. It's not just your vertical corners, the corners along your floor and ceiling can also be treated to improve your bass response. If you are unable to get your speakers all the way up against that front wall, you can help absorb that omnidirectional bass that we mentioned earlier by putting thick bass traps behind those. Depending on what your goals for a room are, the back wall can be an area that can add a lot of character to a room. It's usually the source of a lot of unwanted peaks and knolls, so we always recommend that people treat their back wall with thick broadband absorbers such as the 244, soffit, or monster bass trap. You can also try experimenting with a tuned bass trap such as the scopus. The back wall is also an area that a lot of people like to start experimenting with diffusion. So, here we can add our Gotham, Alpha, and Impression series, and this can liven up or make a room sound larger. But the smaller the room is, the more careful we have to be with our diffusion. And the smallest rooms probably wouldn't benefit from diffusion. Remember, a mixing and mastering room should have as little color in it as possible. This requires treatment in key locations with the right mix of absorption, bass trapping, and diffusion. As always, use these guidelines to get started and experiment as you go to get what sounds best for you. Our team of designers is always here to help you get the most out of your room setup and treatment. So hit us up on our website or use our free room acoustic visualizer to sketch out your space. Get free acoustic advice. Visit GIKacoustics.com for educational articles and tutorials.